Welcome back, everybody, to We Talk Film. I am your host, as always, very joined, as always, by Clayton. How you doing, Clayton? Hello. Very, I am doing great. And welcome back to another episode, because today we have a new guest. A, a very new special guest. guest. Don't we, Barry? Who have we yes, got today? Yes, we do. Today we have the great, the one, the only, Dylan Brown. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Whoa, there he is. Hello. How are you, Mr. Dylan? There I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm good. It's looking I'm good. amazing. I'm good. Well, hey, Barry, time, before... We have visual. We have everything more than other we guests. Do. So we're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> we do things. We do things. <laughs> oh, man. Things. Okay. So today we're talking about the newest Hunger Games movie as well as the new Scott Pilgrim show. But before we get into both of those, we always do our little news segment. And the news. Barry pressed the button and it worked. He can't hear the audio today. No, so I can't hear anything wrong, today. <laughs> he won't know about it. It's to communicate in sign language. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, God, we have like no news this week. Nothing has happened. Um, we've gotten no new trailers of any importance. Um, only a couple stories that I'd like to bring up. The first one um, yep. of which is we got some more casting news for Superman Legacy, James Gunn's first DC forte. Uh, he's dipping his toes into DC this way, and he's cast a bunch more actors as a bunch more characters in this film. The first nice, one nice. is Nicholas Holt is going to be the new Lex Luthor. Um, obviously, he's the guy from a bunch of other things. He was in the X-Men movies. Uh, and yeah, no, he's playing Lex Luthor. And I hope that it's just better than Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Hopefully. That's, that's about it. That's Yeah, that's all you have to one up <laughs> is just his Lex Luthor because that, um, that was really bad casting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we know. Um, so, yeah, we got him. We also got uh, Skylar Gizondo. Gizondo? As Jimmy Olsen, uh, an actor that I'm not familiar with, but he's also in Things. He's in things. Yeah, he does things. <laughs> he does I've all seen of the him things. In stuff. Yeah, I've probably seen him in stuff too, but I don't we recognize know who him. He is. He, yeah, he, <laughs> that's kind of on brand for Jimmy Olsen, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you're fair not meant enough. to know just, who Jimmy is. <laughs> nobody knows who Jimmy Olsen is, man. All right, and then the final one that we got is Sarah Sampio Sampio. Again, these names are hard to pronounce because I don't know who they are. <laughs> Um, as Eve Teshmasher, a character that I don't know. Uh, I, I <laughs> have no idea I. who that is. Neither do I. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a deep pull or that's just like, I don't know, one of the other Daily Planet news people. And they're like, this is a big thing. It's unnamed reporter three. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's someone. It's I someone. Know. I don't know. All right, moving away from Superman, over to Star Wars, as Taika Waititi has chimed in about his uh, featured fe featured Star Wars film that he's working on. It's still being worked on, which it's was the first bit on? that surprised me. Um, but the second thing is what he said about it. He says that he wants his movie to recapture the joy of the original trilogy and is going to try and make it as close to those films as possible. Coming yeah, from Taika no. Waititi, I don't happen. think any Not of that's going to happen. Gonna happen. <laughs> no. I hope we get, like, a fun movie from him. He should do, like, an Ewoks movie. <laughs> that would something be stupid. interesting. Something stupid. Give him something yeah. wacky, you know. Just do whatever. Something fun. Like a Jar Jar Binks spin-off show. Or oh, God, no. <laughs> something that he can create, like, a good comedy out of, I reckon. Yeah, it, it would have to be... <laughs> Even, like, a droids. You know how they did, like, the droids animated show in, like, the 80s? If they did something like that, he'd, he'd nail it. Or like a, the same storyline as Jojo Rabbit, but in Star Wars. <laughs> that's so one. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no. Let's not let him do that. Uh, maybe he'll do the same, same storyline as, like, Love and Thunder. In Star Wars. I'm sure oh, everyone, no. would, everyone would love that. Oh, no. Please, no. Anything <laughs> but that. All right. Final news story this week is we're getting a new Karate Kid film. Um, I saw an ad on social media the other day, and I was like, what the hell is this? What's Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan doing? 
and they're promoting the new Karate Kid movie because they're both starring in it, and they're looking for their actor to play the Karate Kid. Um, they're putting oh, wow. out like a worldwide search across everything. Uh, you have to be of Chinese descent though, so unfortunately we cannot apply to be the new God Karate Kid. God damn it! God damn it! You know it's, I can definitely still shame. pull it off. <laughs> I don't think you ever could have. Barry. I don't know if you ever could have. Uh, uh Dylan definitely could have though. He knows karate. Mm-hmm, yes, he knows uh, karate. <laughs> I know karate. I definitely know karate. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, more of a jujitsu guy myself, but that's okay. I know Karmagra. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for the news this week, Barry. Let's get on to our main thingy today. What's happening The main today? thingy today. Wow, yes. All three of us went to go and see a wonderful film. But before that, I'll play a quick little clip before we get into it. Mr. Snow, let me ask you one final time. What are the Hunger Games for? So, yes, we all went to go and see the newest movie out of the Hunger Games franchise, um, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, um, the newest installment that's come out. So the synopsis for this one is basically the story of Cornelius Snow, the big bad guy from the original trilogy or quadrilogy, because there was two, part one and part two. Or the, like, two the part, it's a trilogy. Yeah, two part, yeah. Uh, so it's based about his years before he would become the tyrannical president of Pan Am. He is handsome and charming, and though the Snow family has fallen on hard times, Cornelius sees a chance for change in his fortune um, when he is chosen to be a mentor in the 12th Hunger Games, only to have his elation dashed when he is assigned to be a mentor of a tribute girl called Lucy Gray Bird, Bed, and from the Improvised District 12. So, yes, basically, we have Katniss yeah. Everdeen, like, 70 years before she was ever born. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of. All right, kind well, of. oh, man, let's get straight into it. I'm going to throw it over to our guest today no. to tell us tell us a little bit about uh, the theatre experience, how it all went, and what you thought of the film, Mr. Dylan. Well, my thoughts... Uh... As we've discussed previously, different from yours, but I thought it was a, a great film, a great cinematic masterpiece. To be honest, uh, oh wow, uh, <laughs> big words. No, no, yes. Um, oh god, the 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 camera movements in it were phenomenal. First off, the action cam uh, movements in it and the tracking cam in all the fight scenes was amazing. I reckon, just in my yeah. opinion, anyways. And the I don't know the story of it as well just perfectly links everything together in a way it's like it's done elegantly and it's done right in my opinion from what I can remember of the first Hunger Games movie I need to go back and watch it uh, but it links everything together and it just the ev- everything that they say and everything that they act links everything together perfectly so that's just my opinion on it um, oh wow yeah some some high praise coming from our guests yeah. today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Barry, we, we normally is, don't get that. Oh, like man. all our guests normally just absolutely hate the movie to review. So you're like the first one ever to be like, "Oh, we're, we're loving this film." So that's good. Yeah. That's a good turnaround. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving. I'm loving this film. I'm, I loved it. It was, it was amazing. Yes. Yeah, yes. Well, Barry, what did you think of the Hunger Games, Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes? A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Oh my gosh, what a yes. title. First of all, oh, that is so a long. super long title. You know, just just <laughs> cut that down. Just just don't even put Hunger Games in there. You should have just called it something else. Everyone knows it was part of the Hunger Games. Yada, yada, yada. But yes, um, overall, I did quite... Oh, this I found this movie to be a bit, a bit average. Um, I still found it better than like part two and part three of um, the original Hunger Games trilogy. Um, still nowhere near enough to the original one. The new one's still, because I watched it actually yesterday. Um, I was like, hey, you know, I haven't seen it in like a decade. I'll go and rewatch it again. Jennifer Lawrence is like super young in it as well. And I was like, that's right. Oh, she yeah. was only like a teenager when she did this. Um, but yeah, I didn't mind it so much. The story for it was a bit lackluster in some parts and everything like that. But it was also kind of interesting to see. So basically, 
there's like over three chapters this film takes place in. So you have the beginning chapter, which is before the actual games begin, where Cornelius, you find out about his origin story, that he was alive during the war as a young kid and that his father died and yada, yada, yada. And they used to obviously used to be hot, quite high up in society. But obviously with his father passing, they went to like a real bummy living, but still lived in the in the capital. So, you know, they're still doing all right than District 12 people, I suppose. Uh, yeah. And obviously, um, Cornelius, a uh, young Cornelius Snow, is played by Tom Blythe, the uh, um, actor that I have seen him in a couple things, but I can't remember what from. Um, yeah, I think he looks he did, really familiar. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think he's done a phenomenal job playing a younger Snow, in my opinion. Like, it was actually kind of interesting to see, be like, oh, like you had, um, like, oh, I forget the actor for the original movie. That played him Which as like one? an older man. Oh, in, like the original, yeah. the hung, yeah, the first Hunger Games. Um, yeah, mm. forget his name anyway. But like, who were you gonna get to like play a younger version of that actor type thing? Because that actor has like done so many things. And I'm drawing a blank right now, and I don't know why. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> I'm looking it up. You keep talking. Yeah. Um, I think his portrayal as Cornelius Snow, as a young Cornelius Snow, was very well done. And, you know, over the movie, we got to see all that and the change that he became from. It was Donald being Sutherland. A decent guy. Right. Donald Sutherland, that's it. Wow. I can't believe I was Gosh. drawing a blank. I was like, his head, his face and everything was in my mind, but I could not remember yep. um, whatsoever. Yes. Who were you going to get to play as a young Donald Sutherland? And I think Tom Blythe did a pretty top-notch job of being a, a, a younger version of him. And like the story we got to see, like following, because that's the thing. At the end of the day, this movie is about Cornelius Snow. I really thought it was going to be about more um, Lucy Gray's character, um, but then I was like, no, no, it's it's very much about about his and his rise to how he became president and, well, and everything like that. How he got, got up in power, yeah. um, and then we got obviously Rachel Zelger uh, as Ziegler. Lucy Gray Ziegler. That's the one. You know, she's just there. She's basically the Katniss Everdeen to the story. Um, I didn't really yeah, find kinda. much to her besides, like, towards we got to the end part of the movie in Chapter 3. And that's where everything, like, really hit off for me was actually in the um, Chapter 3 part of this movie. So once, like, the games took place, everything like that, and they were just, like, living out in District 12, I was like, that's actually was the interesting part because then you actually got to see more of the twist with um, Cornelius's character a bit more. That would like drive him a bit more into these these yeah. darker areas, and I was like, that's what I want to see them to do more for the film and everything like that. And then you got the wonderful, the only Viola Davis playing as Doctor Gall in um this movie, who's basically the person who makes all the weird creature things in in the games, and it's like the curator <laughs> or one of the curators. She was fun of the game. She was Perfect absolutely casting. amazing. Oh, in that she role. killed it. Yeah, she was yeah. creepy as all hell, and I'm just like, I'm loving it. I'm loving what you're doing. Um, <laughs> and then we also had um, Tyrion Lannister, <laughs> Peter, uh, Dinklage. Peter Dinklage in this movie, and yeah, he was just peeing. Yeah, he was just basically being Peter Dinklage. Uh, it seems like he's a lot of the it. roles. He's good at it, you know. He's just there <laughs> taking his um. What was he? What was he drinking again? The um. I don't know. It feels like wasn't it morphine or something like that? Morphine. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. It has his morphine addiction going. Uh, but yeah. it was just like it was just some. It was so mm. weird. Like some of his interactions sometimes with some of the actors was a bit bit off putting. And then there was one scene, um, <laughs> which we actually started laughing about while we're watching it, where he's just standing in the background. Um, when they're having like their meetings and he's just off yeah. in the corner like we're not sure what he's doing and, he's just like standing in the background like waiting for the next scene to happen so he can interact like, with the yeah. actors it, it, it was just like, like what? Just <laughs> waiting for his cue he was so obviously just standing in the background and they just forgot about him or something while they're running the dialogue but yep, yeah yep. no okay so yeah this movie it it was all right yeah. I liked it. I think it's definitely just below the first one in terms of how good it is. Uh, yeah. But it took a while to get into it. I, yes. I will say that the longer this movie went along, the more I liked it. Um, but yeah, it, it was a bit of a, a bit of a rough start, at least for me. Um, it's definitely but, a rolling story, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It felt like the story kind of rolled in and you got more and more invested as it went along. and got It went different and different. The more unique that the story was going the war twists and turns that it took was when i was really getting into it because 
Um, I will say this this movie reminds me of the Star Wars prequels in a lot of ways. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, very off, much so. <laughs> starts off rough. It's better as it goes along, and the main dude reminds me so much of Anakin in that third movie, just in the way that he acted yeah. and yeah. everything. Yeah. But he did an awesome job, and um, especially towards the end where he turns and starts getting paranoid about literally everything and all of the twists and turns that happen there. That was probably my favorite part of the film, um, whereas like the middle, the first third where it's the Hunger games part, was probably my least favorite because that was kind of boring. It was like the arena was just like one little coliseum. Everyone was kind yeah, of yeah, it wasn't chilling. like a big it, it, yeah. field or anything like that. Like the um, original yeah. ones, which, which makes sense, I guess, for the story. But it kind of just felt a little bit slow, limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it Definitely felt limited. like that fight could have been over in a day. I yeah. don't know why it took them three days to, to yeah, kill each other. It's like drag it out. Yeah, that was a bit weird. But um, yeah, no, there were moments in it that I wasn't quite sure of. Uh, some story choices and some things were a little bit dumb. Uh, it, the movie definitely suffers a little bit from the if the characters talked about it, there would be no issue. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm curious uh, what what Dylan thinks because he liked it so much. So I'm I'm gonna ask you uh, what you think of the story, like <laughs> the way that it flowed and came uh, together. Look, the. the... The story, I guess, it didn't. During the during the the the, the movie, it didn't feel like a, a fast paced story like the Hunger Games usually are. Yeah. It it definitely felt like it was a rolling over. It definitely didn't pick up until the third part part way through the second act into the third act. Yeah. That's when it, it was. It was two and a half hours long too. So it yeah. was a long movie. It definitely could have been shorter. I reckon they could have mm. cut down that beat that uh, arena fights. They could have oh, yeah. Cut, yeah. De- cut down the promotional thing of, of the uh, characters in the beginning of it. Yes. Um, yeah. That that stuff they could have definitely could have cut down on. But I guess the story in the end ser- served its purpose and it served the purpose well for me. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I'm actually kind of excited to see if they do a sequel to it. And kind of carry on the gap in between him where he leaves off this movie and then becoming president, because there's still, like, 60 yeah. years where they can do some funny stuff, even with different characters in that same yeah. time period. But it's 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 got me interested enough that I want to see a little bit more from The Hunger Games, which is something I never thought I'd say, considering, like, the trilogy was its own little self-contained thing in this world, and now it's like, oh, we get to see some other sides of the world. And, and, and yeah, it's interesting. It was I I, I like the world enough to want to see more. Um, yeah, well, that's definitely like that's to... definitely the thing. You go, Dylan. Oh yeah, so I definitely like to see like him becoming president, him sort of like creating the big yeah. open arena that we're seeing in the um, other films. Just that continuation of it, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing because more what they've done in this film compared to even the other ones is that they've expanded upon the world that is still relying on the Hunger Games and everything like that. And where with the original trilogy, that was kind of like the downfall of that empire and everything like yeah, that, like yeah. trying to get rid of the Hunger Games and it wasn't really centered on that. Where with this film, we actually get to see from a different perspective as well this time um, from someone that's living in the capital, how the rest of the world was living um how mm. how this whole universe is kind of being created and what's it like actually very similar to like today's standards are watching tv shows and everything like that where people weren't watching the, the games and this is already like the 10th one in you know and they had to find new things new elements to try and int- to bring in to get people's attention and everything like that um yeah. and you know and we got to see more more of that side of it and that's the thing like, hopefully if they ever do a sequel there's a lot they could do now because they've set up a lot more of the world elements, in, especially in this film, compared to the other ones. Um, mm. And, yeah, they can just expand upon it, so maybe do, like, the, the 25th Hunger Games or something like that, or even do the 50th yeah. Hunger Games, um, like because that. that's when, like, I think in the second book of the original trilogy, which they didn't show or, or mention anything about um, in the in the second film, was when um, Hamish, the original one of the original guys from District 12, that also won at the 50th um woody harrison's yeah. character like that was yep. a whole thing in the in the book of catching fire about like how 
he won the Hunger Games and how he, what he experienced during it all. And it's like, that's what they could do potentially next, you know, when he was in the that's Hunger true. Games. That could so, be cool. Yeah. Um, but, oh, man, I will say probably my least favorite, least favorite part of this movie was some of the songs. Because this is called oh, the ballad yeah. of Songbirds and Snakes. So there were ballads. Uh, Definitely was. God. Definitely was. Um, yeah, Wait, most what's a, what's of a ballad? Like a song. Like a, it's like a oh. story song. Oh, so, okay, um, okay. so the ballad of the songbird is her writing like the hanging tree song, which we see. Uh, yeah, which I yeah. thought was cool. But that yeah, was cool. The songs I like that. At the start where it's she's just singing and all of a sudden it's she doesn't need a microphone and her voice is kind of reverby and stuff like that annoys me like hell and it's so stupid that she just starts singing all the time because <laughs> yeah yeah oh god yeah she just breaks out into pop songs like twice um yep before all the songs are actually good <laughs> so that yeah, was probably it's like my the, least the favorite songs part. weren't actually fitting for what they needed to do and everything like that no. which was this this bizarre <laughs> like why it why was. are you doing this yeah no, I, they, the songs did get better as they went along. When they um went back to District 12 and she was playing sort of country stuff with her band, I felt like that yeah. sort of made sense because it's like a working world. She was kind of doing the Dolly Parton sort of thing. Yep. And I felt like that that fit better. And if that was kind of what they were doing at the start, it, it might have lent into it more or, or didn't do it at the start and built up to I don't know. But, yeah, uh, like it, it got better as it went along. Again, it's like... I honestly feels like two different people directed this movie and one took over halfway through because the first half is so bland and like mid and then the second half is pretty damn good. So yeah, yeah I'm very I got very mixed feelings about this film. Um yeah. Well, I also don't really know what else to talk with about it. So throw some <laughs> ideas out, guys. Well, that's the thing. Yes, it's like yeah, that that whole um last sequence. So basically, yeah, you got chapter 1 which is him learning to be like a student and a mentor type thing. Then you got chapter two, which is the games itself, which was just so long and drawn out. And I'm just like, what's, what's, what's going on? And then you go to chapter three, which that's the thing about this. Show. It ended on a high note. Like it got better. The more you watched, um, definitely, definitely the ending was a lot far better than the beginning of it. And that's the thing towards the end with, um, Cornelius's character and everything like that, which you kind of start to see in um, chapter two is like the, the kind of evil side to him a bit more and what he needs to do and everything like that. And you definitely see that in um, chapter three come out with what he does and his interactions, like with his best friend that also goes to district yeah. 12 with him and stuff like that, like almost ratting out your best friend who then gets hanged uh, was, a, was a whole thing as well. And, you know, I wanted to see more of that character development in this movie. Like, yeah. if they actually split, like, half of the film up to, like, actually having him in District 12, like, if that whole bit went a bit longer and everything like that, I feel like even the ending, the payoff would have been much more better. Because that's the thing with um Lucy Gray's character. I didn't really feel empathy or anything towards her whatsoever this film. Yeah, And it's just, really. like, we're trying to, almost as an audience, because the, the, the writers or director wants you to because it's like you got Cornelius's character liking her and having interest in her and i'm just like why my dude why do you like this chick who just come out of nowhere <laughs> and like they kiss it like before the hunger games happens yeah. as well and like you only met True. once and it's just like yeah, that was uh, kind of confusing that was just like it, there's it no a little bit weird it felt a what bit weird it felt a little bit forced yeah what was yeah. your what thoughts you upon that dylan what, yeah what do you think about lucy as a oh yes, same as same as Barry. No empathy at all towards yeah. her. It's just like really? a forced, forced sort of relationship between them. I guess it was yeah, yeah forced by the story writers, and there's no real like development yeah. in it. it and felt that weird. Sucked. It also yeah. felt like the relationship didn't need to be there either. Did it could not. have just no, been like no. a, a way to escape through this thing, and they didn't need to have the weird relationship that doesn't go anywhere. They kiss a couple times, and then. And then all of a sudden he's shooting at her in a forest. <laughs> you know, there's not much yeah. Yeah. between unless the like, two, really. Unless like in a sequel, like Lucy comes back and there's some sort of like big connection or whatever. Like there's a yeah, huge storyline there, whatever, in like a sequel. But I don't just, I just don't see that happening. No, I really, no, I, I feel like, like that she disappeared yeah. at the end too. And they left yeah. that a bit ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, ambiguous as well as yeah, to where she went. 
it, it makes Snow even more paranoid about it, which is what I really liked about him and it, the acting performance, is he portrays a paranoid guy really well. He's constantly tripping over himself and second-guessing, like, everyone around him, and um, even, like, his best friend falls victim to this. Yeah, and yeah. It, becomes really really powerful towards the end where he's actually questioning everything and having to make these hard choices and basically become a bad person because he can't trust anyone to be any better so <laughs> it's yeah, it turns, really turns into a strength good. definitely yeah it definitely does but it just takes so long to get there and it feels like yeah if they cut out half an hour of this movie of the boring shit at the start then it would have made it just better in general. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah There's definitely like a bunch of like filler scenes that they don't need, like plotted all throughout the story. Definitely the beginning of it, just a bunch yeah. of stuff they don't need there. Oh, no, definitely not. A lot of like the dialogue as well, was it just felt forced yeah. a lot of the scenes between, like, yeah, mm. Cornelius and Lucy and everything like that. And that's the thing. Tom Blythe um, has done like a tremendous job as well, like, representing uh, that character again and like that's the thing with this is a new way of seeing that cornelius's character um and making the man that he will eventually become and stuff like that but it would just like it would have been nice seeing more of that development with him as well mm. like, the more of a reason why he became parent the more of the reason why he became like the snow we know from the other films and everything like that like he, he was very much an evil guy in those films and it was still just like it would have been really cool to see more of that development and also, like, yeah. the interaction between him and Lucy, like, that should have been over, like, drawn out a little bit longer, but, like, to take away other scenes from the film. So, like, if they showed, like, maybe they were together in District 12 for, like, a year or something like that, you know, he was stuck yeah. there for, not just, like, two days or whatever he was stuck there for, because it didn't feel that long whatsoever. No, no. Or, or even have the relationship be a bit, like, I don't know, one-sided at the start sort of thing. Like, yeah, cause she, yeah. I don't know why she was so quick to trust and like fall in love with him too. It's like yeah, this guy from that the was a whole thing. that's going to put you in a cage and make you fight. And she's just kind of chill with it because she likes him. <clears throat> yep. And then he falls in love with her. Maybe if they didn't actually do anything till they got to District 12 and he was just kind of chasing after her because he had this like, I don't know, idea in his head of her. And she was just kind of oblivious to that at least, or, you know, at least questioning it. Yeah. Maybe that would have just added that extra element to it. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, no, those definitely could have done it better. Uh, okay, so is there anything else we want to talk about this movie? Um, regarding this movie? Hanging yeah. Tree is an amazing song. Hanging Tree? I Hanging Tree is an amazing well. song. I will admit yeah, it is I... a great song. Even from when they played in the original films. It's always been a good song. Mm. Yeah, so that was in the original films, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. And that um, was the that was kind of the cool connection to actually be like, oh, so that song is actually about him. Yeah. Like he yeah. is the man that killed three and everything like that. Uh, so it was just yeah. like, ah, okay, that's that's a nice way to tie into it. And then there was like a couple of the other Easter eggs that they tried to tie into the other films. Uh, was just oh, like the sw the swamp potato thing. Yeah. Oh, we call, they call it, it Katniss. Katniss. <laughs> I was like, like oh, that like, is God that was it. so forced. <laughs> that was the only one that felt forced. Yeah, yeah. But, but like the other ones, like the song stuff was fine. I liked that. Um, but yeah, no, the Katniss one I was like, oh my god, yeah, that was weird. Um, I was like struck, like what the hell? Why are you yeah. calling Katniss? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Katniss is named after a swamp potato. Yay! <laughs> great origin story for her. Great origin oh, that's story. so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. Oh well. Uh, should we move on to some final thoughts and ratings of the movie then? Unless there's anything else you guys Why want to bring not? up. Why not? We can talk about it in our final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, sure, I guess. All right. Um, so, Dylan, why don't you take it away? Tell us what you thought about this movie. Give us your thoughts. Give it a rating out of 10 if you feel so inclined. Just go in depth. <laughs> yeah, so thoughts, yeah, it was a good movie. had a good story, but by the end, it had a good story. Definitely connected everything well, I do think. Definitely too slow of a movie. Way too slow, I think. Um, and my rating, 7. Seven Ooh. to eight, seven point five out of ten. Okay, nice, nice. 
I feel like just we a bit better than IMDb's bit. rating, so you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you came in here like this is a great movie, and now you're yeah, kind of questioning yeah. parts of it. I feel like we've kind of indoctrinated you a little converted bit. Converted him. You're Welcome to the cult course. of WTF. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, a critic. Like, like, there's some of the stuff that I just didn't really think about before before this, but now definitely like yeah, I can realize yeah. that that stuff relationship was just nothing to it. Yeah. Just, no, yeah. no. I feel like that happens. Like every time we get a guest on, they end up like shit talking or loving it. They always <laughs> change their opinion by the time they get to the end. Right. I'll, I'll stick with it. It's a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Stick well, with it. Well, <laughs> I can't change it now. <laughs> you I've already it written now. it down. Oh, it's, it's written. It's, written. Yeah, it's, it's there, there in the fine print. It's yeah. logged in. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the contract oh. I signed. That is yeah, the you contract signed. you signed. <laughs> You're locked away now, boy. Definitely. Yeah, then it goes you. into a vault for a hundred years. Yeah. You can say you're a movie critic now too. Yeah, you, you can. Right. You, you, you critic a movie. Your opinion matters it. now. Yeah. That's that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, uh, Barry. What did oh, you think? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, I still thought it was very entertaining. Um, that's the thing. Definitely, I. Th- Far superior in the story and stuff like that than what they were trying to do with um I believe like part well second and like third ones of the original trilogy but still yeah like I watched the original one again yesterday the original one is still amazing to watch if I'm being honest I was just good. like yeah. I was like wow like when they made this and everything like that it was like so well done the actual storytelling even the dialogue and the interaction between the actors even compared to this movie is just like, it's so much better. Like the actual relationship Katniss has with, um, was it Peter? Um, yeah. yeah. In it and everything like that. It's like actually normal dialogue with one another. <laughs> and then comparing it to even this film, it felt what? very forced in everything like that. And it's just like kind of weird. Cause I'm pretty sure well, this one is based off a book as well, done by the same writer. Yes. So they yeah, would have followed that as well, but it just, yeah. it just wasn't quite, quite there. Um, yeah. So yeah, overall, I'm going to give this movie a five out of ten. That's it. It was still okay. entertaining enough. I like the world more of the world we got to see in this movie. That's for sure. The Hunger Games, like the actual capital this time around, and a bit more before the Hunger Games started, and how a bit more they were made and controlled, and all the behind the scenes things of it. And I also did like the use of the bit like older retro technology because even though yeah, this is obviously based sixty years before the events of um, Katniss's like. Hunger Games and everything like mm-hmm. that. Um, they kind of changed the technology a bit where it's still like kind of like 60s, 70s, like a retro-y with a lot of like the TVs yeah. and, and stuff like that, which was kind of cool to see in a way. Uh, like there is that difference of time period and, and, and everything like that. Um, but yeah, a five out of 10 for this movie. I, can, I just got to ask like one one thing. Just yep. uh, how, how far spoilers are we allowed to give for this? Oh, um, you can go whatever you want to do, oh, as many as you want. What the- what the hell's with the drones? The drones oh, that take the water <laughs> in? What the? What? Why? Why are they there? Why are they? Killing, why are they hurting people? Because they're they're part of the war. They were they were war drones. drones. They're shitty drones from the war. In the in the original ones, you had the like the fancy ones that came and dropped yeah. off. Stuff. So these are just I don't know shitty prototypes of that idea. Yeah, yeah. But they were just bad. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's good. Just like. There was like meant to like yeah. hit them or like yeah. yeah well, that's yeah. the thing because they they even said that in the, in the movie um they're repurposed war drones so originally they were like that's meant right. to yeah, yeah um uh, kill and everything like that um and so obviously they were like oh we can reuse them and and try to make them work for this and obviously yeah it didn't work obviously they didn't, they drones. didn't test yeah. them but like, <laughs> didn't test them who cares sense, we'll oh test them God. on the contendees. <laughs> Oh yeah! Before I get my my final thoughts, I'd like to uh, talk about my favorite character, the coin flipper guy, the announcer for the actual oh, game. Oh yes, yes. The only thing that got me through that section of the movie was he's so fun. He was such a yep. great performance. Uh, I don't know the actor's name. I can't remember. But yeah, he's like in all of um, these movies as well. Um, Asteroid yes. City. Yeah, he was stuff in um, like with some Wes Anderson stuff. Wes Anderson but yeah, stuff, no, yeah. He was so fun in this film, and I want to see a sequel with him. <laughs> yeah. Can we get his yeah. origin story? <laughs> that would be that would be pretty cool. He was so you know? fun. Um, yeah, but, Jason yeah. Swartzman okay. as Lucky Flickerman. Yes, that's right. That's his that's name. That's it, yeah. yes. Yeah. No, he was so fun. Lucky Flickerman. He flips his coin up, and then it comes down 10 minutes later. Like, oh, that's cool. That's a cool little movie trick. And, and I he's also a weatherman. <laughs> I want his moustache. 
I want his moustache more than anything. Oh, that's a nice moustache. Yeah, it was so it fun. Is. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Oh, but yes, I think I'm going to give this film a 6.5 out of 10. Slightly higher than Barry, slightly lower than Dylan, uh, right in the middle. Because I did enjoy this film. It definitely got better as it went along, and it definitely had its moments. Um, I really loved the main character's performance. I thought he was awesome. Uh, just, yes, yeah, some interactions with the other main character, Lucy Gray. It was a bit weird in for the most part, but then sometimes it worked. So, like, it wasn't completely bad. That's why it's a 6.5. Uh, yeah, a bit slow to get off. Should have been half an hour shorter. Yeah, but yeah. overall, I think it pays off, and I think it's worthy of the Hunger Games name as a sequel, because I do think it's better than the second, third, and fourth films. Um, it's not as good as the first one. But yeah, I think it's cool, and I'd really like to see more of the world and more of these unique characters to it, because it is a cool little dystopian world that um, the writer Suzanne Collins uh, has built up, and they've adapted fairly well. I mean, none of the films are really, like, terrible. I mean, some of them are better than others, but, you know, there's worse things to watch. You could go watch the Marvels. True, like, true. You could go I mean, see the Marvels. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what that's my rating. Also, nice. Barry, to answer your question, Tom Blythe has been in Robin Hood, Billy the Kid, The Glided Age, and Benediction. Benediction. Ah, uh, that's where I've seen it because yeah, I want to start watching Ooh. the Billy the Kid TV show. Uh, yep. It looks actually really well oh, done. So I was like, yes, ah, he, he's in that. He's yeah. he, there's a billboard of that show on the way yeah. home from TAFE every day. I see a billboard with him on it, and that's where I recognize his face from. Because there's a Billy the Kid <laughs> He's the guy ad. from the billboard. Oh, my God. The billboard. Plays William H. Bonnie in that, so. Uh, yeah. Look forward to. Yeah, mm. yeah. Nice, nice. Okay. Well, Ooh. I feel like that wraps up on our Hunger Games segment on today's podcast. So, if you do want to stick around, um, we're going to be talking about the Scott Pilgrim animated show. Um, if you do want to stick around, we can leave. It's up to you, man. <laughs> I have not. I have nothing co to contribute to Scott Pilgrim's things. I don't oh, okay. know what the okay. hell that's all about. So that's I'm all right. Well, thanks for joining anyway. Thank um, you for yes, having it's, me. It's an honor, as always, having people on our podcast, and hopefully, we'll get you on again. I'll yes. go and save some money to watch some more movies and. <laughs> all, <laughs> right, <then. laughs> all right. All right. Well, thanks, we'll Dylan. catch you next time. See Come ya. Anytime. See ya. Was an honor. <laughs> and there he goes. Oh, there Barry. Goes. So, yes, the second part of today's podcast, now that we've gotten rid of our wonderful guest, uh, is, what's it called? Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Scott Pilgrim Takes anime. Off. Oh, yes. Barry. Oh, Clayton. I have a little thingy. That, that, that's all you get for the the little thingy. It's not that oh, long. Nice. It's just like a Bollywood version of the of the song. Um, <laughs> but yes, did you want to talk about this one a little bit while I fix some podcasty stuff? Sure, <laughs> you fix the podcasty stuff, and I'll talk about this show because I really loved this show, Barry. I w I will say, um, the only thing I knew about this show going into it is I saw some photos. And I knew who was cast in this film. Because the cast of this film is the first thing that blew my mind away. Because it's everyone from the 2010 movie returning to yes. voice their characters. Everyone. Which is insane. Yeah. Because yeah. this is a cast including like Michael Cera, Chris Evans, Brie Larson. Like every single actor you can ever think of. Um, Brandon Ruth, Aubrey Plaza, Jason Anna Kendrick. Jason Yeah, <laughs> He's in Mary this. Elizabeth Weinstead. Captain Kieran America, <laughs> Chris yeah, Evans. Jason, yeah, and Jason Schwartzman as well. <laughs> yeah, like everyone's oh. in here. Yeah, everyone's in this film. So, um, if you want, I'll give the rundown of the show. So we're doing overall rundown, or going like episode by episode? Oh, I was just gonna tell you. Yeah, we can go overall. I was just gonna tell you kind yeah, of. Yeah, no, just, just let's just go overall. At least, at least the build up. Yeah, we'll go yeah. overall. I'm not going episode by episode. I binge watched it. I couldn't tell you where one started <laughs> or one ended. But um, uh, yeah, all right. So Scott takes off. The first episode, I know exactly what happens though, because this starts off exactly like the movie. It Pretty does. much following the story to a T. Scott Pilgrim's a 23-year-old. He's uh, dating a 17-year-old. And he falls in love with the girl that appears in his dream. 
Ramona Flowers. She's got funky looking hair, and mm-hmm, she, mm-hmm. I don't know, was the crush of every kid who saw Scott Pilgrim in 2010. So. Definitely, definitely. Major crush <laughs> on her. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Um, Still do. Yeah, no, Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael Sarah reprises his role as Scott Pilgrim and basically tries to get the girl um, until yeah. he has to fight her seven evil exes. Dun, dun, um, dun. But in, this is where it differs from the movie, and this is where it surprised me because I did not see this coming. No. I did not know of any of this um, or any that any of this was going to happen. So Scott Pilgrim gets into a fight with the first ex, Matthew Patel. Um, who in the movie he defeats, and then he goes on to the next, and he defeats them all and wins and saves the day. But in this yep. show, he dies. He loses that fight, or so it seems. But we don't know that yet. So it, it's yeah. like Scott Pilgrim's dead, and then for the next three episodes, we follow uh, like everyone recovering from that fact. Ramona Flowers basically becomes our main character throughout the rest of the show up until the final episode. Um. Yeah. Where we find out Scott's alive and she brings him. Oh no, sorry, he comes back. He comes and back. And it gets all timey, wimey, wibbly wobbly. But yep. up and like, but before them, there's a lot that happens. This show's insane. So much. And I, I loved it. And I know you didn't love it. So I think I'm going to throw it over to you to tell me what you thought of it. Because yeah. I really enjoyed it. What's the like? I I still enjoyed it. Like most other shows that I have watched this year, that's for sure. But it was just like for me, wasn't on the same level as the original film. Um, it, that's the it goes back. Like I I started so obviously started watching the first episode and I binge watched it like you did as well. And I was like, oh yeah, it's it's gonna be like a recreation of um the the original film, but like obviously animation. Maybe they'll throw in a bit more because each episode was like twenty four yeah. minutes long, something like that. Uh, I mean, you know, hey. extend, extend, yeah, extend upon it type thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm all, I'm all down for it. And then, yeah, that's the thing. The first episode, Scott dies. And I'm just like, hold up. Wait a minute. You're <laughs> taking my boy Michael Sierra out. You're taking him out. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. Sierra? Is it Sierra <laughs> or Sarah? It's Sarah. It's just, yeah, Michael Sarah. Sarah. There is I no eye I. in that. I thought there was there an eye. There is no eye. Okay. Have Michael Sarah. There was, there's no eye. I always thought there was an eye. Much like God. there's no Scott oh. Pilgrim in this show. He's barely ever in yeah. it, and they call it Scott Pilgrim. I'm just like, okay, why? And then basically we follow the story of Ramona, which I did enjoy at the beginning of it, um, and I did very much like the episode where she's, um, when it was like um, they were actually making the original movie. Oh like, yes, that was great. <laughs> on that, I was like, "All right, that that's cool. I like, I like to see that." It was so fun. And um, and that's the thing. It was great to like hear everyone like coming back to voice their actors, um, or voice their roles again and everything like that. That's the thing. They even yeah. got like Chris Evans and like everyone to come back for it. I'm just like, wow. Everyone. I'm just like, how? Insane. First of all, how? Um, oh boy. And yeah, it was, it was kind of good to see all that, but it was just, yeah, the story that they did with it, I just didn't really vibe with, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I felt like it was very long and, and drawn out, and I was hoping they would get wackier with it. And even like the animation and everything like they do, which I absolutely, absolutely adore, like the style of the characters, because that's obviously what they did for the comic books and everything like that. But being for animation, I was hoping they would go even more wackier with what they did in the movie. Because that's the thing about the, the cool thing about watching the movie and everything like that. And like, I actually watched it again this morning because it's just so cool. <laughs> like, it kind of plays into so the wackiness of it all, like all the visual effects that they do, all the stupid little things that they do and the comedic timing of it, I think was just a lot more well done in the movie compared to this as well. Like I just wasn't having like a laugh as much as I was compared to like the movie as well. It was all just kind of like a serious tone personally to me. And I just didn't feel like, yeah, you know, I wasn't like interacting enough with, with these characters, you know, like I wasn't vibing with them, which is kind of weird because I absolutely adore all the characters in the movie, but when it was done to put onto this and like showing it from this perspective, you know, showing Ramona's perspective of things, I was just like, 
cool. All right. Is Scott coming back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel kind of the same way. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, it definitely, the draw of the movie, and I haven't read the comics that it's based off of, but the draw of the movie is Scott. Michael Cera's yeah. performance, Scott Pilgrim is our eyes into this wacky world as he navigates yeah. it and fights his way through it. But in this, obviously, he's taken away. He takes yeah. off. He's gone. Um, so, yeah, we follow it from everyone else's perspective, which if the movie didn't exist, this would be awful. Oh, but yeah. I, I kind of yeah. see it as, as this weird extension of the movie. Like, it's a pseudo sequel, right? But, uh, you know, like, I like it for for what it is as a sequel to the movie, like an off-put. Like, if this was a special feature on the DVD of the movie or something, you know, this would be amazing. Oh, and yeah. I really yeah. liked this show. I'm sitting on, like, a high review score because I, I love these characters. And I love yeah. the wackiness that they got up to. It was just a different spin on the story. They're like, how different can we make the story of Scott Pilgrim that we've told before in a perfect movie? Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. And then, yeah, so going into this, they get very wacky, and I really enjoyed it, even though I kind of see where you're coming from because the yeah. story is definitely not as good as that original movie story. No, and that's the thing, because it started to pick up, like, towards the end, because I really like, yeah, the, the episode when they, like, obviously are trying to make the movie itself. Oh, yeah. Can we and, talk and about the that? Whole, that can we talk about that episode? Um, I think it's episode oh, yeah. five? Or it's something like that. Halfway through the halfway show, through. and I, it was probably like my favorite episode because of how funny it was. Obviously, being filmmakers oh, ourselves, it was absolutely great. Go, <laughs> see, like so young Neil right, I'll, is the I'll guy that the, made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the context. So, young Neil, uh, he wants to become a screenwriter. Uh, after he finds out what the word cinephile means, so he stays <laughs> up late one night types away at his computer, and he's like, oh, I finally did it, and then it realizes he's only typed out the heading. It's like in Neil, young Neil's room, <laughs> and that's like it. So he goes to sleep, and uh, his quote-unquote sleep paralysis demon writes it for him in his sleep. It's obviously not that. We find out later, um, but we'll get into that then, because, yeah, he wakes up, and there's a fully drafted movie script on his desk. Um, yep. Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life, they call it. <laughs> yeah. so Written by Young Neil. Young uh, Neil was my favorite character in this entire Young Neil show. is amazing. So funny. He was so funny. All of the humor came from him. Like, all yeah, of the best yeah. humor. Um, so he takes it to a studio, and the director, Edgar Wrong, <laughs> I'm not right. sure if it was voiced by Edgar Wright, but it, it probably was, um... Voices, voices Edgar wrong and makes the movie. He's the director of the film. Yeah, and that's where the funniest parts happened. Um, did you catch the security guards? Um, yes, in that yes, I catch the well? security guards. Yeah, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost Simon were the Pegg security Frost. guards. And that yep. was really funny to see. So yeah, they make a movie, and the whole like episode and a half of it is dedicated to them trying to make the original movie because the events of Scott Pilgrim winning are written in this screenplay. And I was like, this is so, so much fun. This is so stupid and insane. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, there was just so many little filmmaking jokes. So I guess, I guess if you're a filmmaker, you can at least watch oh, that yeah. episode and enjoy that. But um, yeah, so they make a movie. And then, yep. it, uh, yeah, what, what happens next? I don't know. It's revealed later on that it's time travel shit and Scott Pilgrim shows back up pretty much straight after that. And it's like, oh my god! Scott and then he Pilgrim. was the one that kidnapped himself. Dun dun dun. Um, Future Scott yeah, Pilgrim. Basically, Future Scott Pilgrim is like got into a fight with Ramona, and then is all sus about it. So then he he's like, I know how to fix this. I'll go back in time and kidnap my younger self from defeating the seven evil exes, and then she'll never be with me in the first place. And that's will resolve yeah. everything. And that's the thing, like, when it started to get in, all into the time traveling stuff, so, like, yeah, later in the season, and, um, like, um, all the, that type of thing, like, it started to get more zany and more wacky, which I started yeah. to e enjoy more of. Like, I was just like, okay. this is what I want. I wanted this, because since it was animation, since it was a cartoon version of it, I wanted them to get as zany as possible with what they wanted to do with these characters and everything like that. And that's the thing, before all that, I still very much, it was just like these characters still being somewhat 
what they were and then even the animation in those episodes i just don't feel like it was fitting at the time like some of it was really dull to look at if i'm being honest and just like the voicing with the actual characters and this is things that i need to look at at the moment because we're working on some certain projects and, yeah, yeah. and everything like that um and it wasn't until we yeah, like the final two episodes where i'm just like wait a minute they, they stepped up the animation a game a little bit here like like some something's, something's going on even the first episode is still like pretty good animation it's like on the same part yeah. as the final two episodes and i'm just like why weren't you doing that like throughout the entire thing like like what would you know yeah, getting more zany getting more bright colors sure. with it all and it was just like was it budget constraints was it time constraints like what's no. what's what's the situation there and that's the thing yeah those final two episodes like they did get more wackier with the story with all, like doing the whole time travel stuff um like yeah having an older version of scott like fighting the all of them essentially and that was voiced by will force hay as well which which was kind of funny oh yeah that was great. um and you know was it was so actually many voice actors in this so Insane. many voice actors did you did you catch who the narrator was <laughs> no who was the narrator it was, it was weird al wow <laughs> he was he was the narration voice the deep sort of scott pilgrim died oh no sort yeah of guy. yeah but wow yeah, no, that was really funny yeah, I feel like they just got, like, everyone, as many as they possibly could. They even got Finn Wolfhard in there, the guy yeah, from Stranger Things. Yeah, he was Things. young, Scott. Yeah, yeah he was Scott. in, like, one scene. One and scene. then, yeah, obviously, yeah, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Um, and yeah, like, okay, so, yeah, so time many travel people. shit. With time the travel shit. Whiny. Um, that was probably, honestly, like, I don't know. I, I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as the rest of the show, and I don't know why, because the animation, yeah, definitely get definitely got better the fighting animation was really cool yes yes um but yeah i will say the time travel stuff was kind of eh. yeah no it still was kind of, of like eh, but it was but just like at I, that point of the story like it did pick up the most and i was I suppose, just like ah, oh, like it, it it's getting sense. more zanier with it <laughs> and it got zany and it made sense but i i don't know i still kind of like eh, time travel shit it's eh. Whereas I preferred the rest of the show more, even though that was like what you said, dull. I was, I don't know. I just I vibed with the rest of the show more than I did the time travel yeah. ending. And I feel like I don't. But it's also like if they did it in a different way, it probably wouldn't have had a good ending as it did. Yeah, like as good yeah. of an ending. I, f I don't know. It's tough because this this show also does set up for a sequel. Um, there is a post credit which they might not season, be doing, according to the creator. Which they <laughs> might not be doing, but I would like them to because yeah, that yeah. that means that's a completely original new territory for Scott Pilgrim. Because this was kind of making oh, yeah. fun of the movie and yeah. taking what that and having running with that story and doing things yeah. different. So it's like now Do we more can of see it. a sort of another sequel because yes. this is kind of also a sequel to the movie in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. But through time travel shenanigans, so it's, I don't know. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. Um, I think another reason why I didn't like this as much as I would have, there was something, it was either with the animation or just the dialogue itself, that every single time someone was talking in these dramatic moments with other characters and everything like that, especially with Ramona trying to find Scott and everything like that, it it really felt like here's your line read it it didn't feel natural to me which is yeah. weird and I, everything like I that wonder, to say because it, it yeah, just like it felt like there was no interaction between the two actors or the, the actors that were on screen and everything like that because they were just so yeah. still and everything like that and i'm just it like wouldn't, what's what's going on yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if all of those dialogue lines were recorded separately considering yeah. the like overall voice talent that they've got on this show i doubt any of those people were in the same room together probably um not. so that's probably why but it did not bother me at all because i really loved the animation style i loved how kind of chill and funky it looked like i i really vibed with it um and i really love the music in this show as well because it's just the music from the movie but yeah. slightly different in some ways and was also, yep. and then also like the credits music was really good. Like Johnny Cash comes on for one episode for some reason. That's it's right. Like, yeah. I didn't like, this. Okay. Things like that was really fun. <laughs> it's like okay, sure, it fits. Um. So yeah, the music was good, which was my main concern, considering it's like you took well, Scott Pilgrim thing, out. Yeah. What's gonna the whole happen thing's now? Meant to be about music. <laughs> was, 
yeah and then but it's like you still kind of had the music so it felt good and then of course you did have the music before and at the end um so i like that i thought it was cool it's it yeah. obviously yeah it's not as good as the movie but it's still up there so i'm yeah i i'm a big fan of it i want to see more i'm ready to jump into oh yeah final thoughts no if, if they if they could do like good. a sequel season to this i would still watch it like i i still yeah. would because I feel Ooh. like they they could do a lot more, and if depending if they can get a bit more of an animation budget or something like that, yeah, there was just something about the overall tone of it all and the story Possibly. that they were doing for majority of it. I just didn't vibe with it. I just felt like it lost its wackiness. I was hoping they could do more of like the weird wackiness that they you see in the movie, the live action film, mm. you know, where there's like all the the zaps and bangs and all the all the cool yep. stuff. I was hoping they would do more of that in animation form. Like they did that and they did do it in the final episode, but it would have been amazing if they could have remained consistent and then had like the final one as like a big Dragon Ball Z like anime fight. Yeah. You know, like there was, it was just something about it. I just didn't really vibe with as much as the original film. Like I love the original film because of those wacky elements to it. And I just feel like the comedic timing with a lot of the jokes as well worked a lot better in the movie and, and everything like that. And I always like, I always go back to like any like good comedic scene in a film is when, um, I think knives rocks up to the house asking where Scott he is. Jumps and out then the he window. jumps out of the window. Like I, every single time I see a clip honestly. of that, I'm on the ground laughing. It is hilarious. Oh, honestly, that scene is probably the greatest comedic timing I've ever seen in a movie ever. Like yeah, it's my yeah. favorite joke in the entire film. Cause I have knew you exactly seen, what you're talking about. Yeah. The, the behind the scenes. <laughs> Um, yeah. of that scene, he steps where, out and yeah, yeah. Back, and then Michael and Sarah is just like the standing there. He's like, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that was so good." Oh man, I love that. It was so funny, and I wish that they referenced that in this and had that. Exact that would have been great. Thing. That would have like, been great. Would have been amazing. Like have it be Young Neil or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Young Neil. I absolutely yeah, it's Young Neil. Like I loved him in the original movie. I love him in this again. Um, I forget yeah, his, the the his actor that voices line. him. Johnny Simmons, oh, that's I can't right. Remember. Yeah, when when um he finds out that the book or something was written by old young Neil, and he's like, yeah. oh, I wonder if there's any relation. <laughs> it's like, what do, you, what do you mean? It's so stupid. I loved him. Yeah. Oh, he was so funny. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it was still great to obviously have everyone come back to do their voices again from the movie, which was is an amazing yeah in itself like literally everyone since that movie has become like these big massive actors now and everything oh, like yeah. that uh um, also old and, now yeah well that's the thing because like this is what we're talking about 15 years ago <laughs> yeah 13 years ago this uh the movie yeah. came out the Damn. comics were a few years before that but yeah insane so, yeah. okay so insane uh, should we give some final thoughts and ratings on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, Barry? Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? What's, what's no, it? You can go first. Yeah, go for it. All <laughs> right. So, yes, at the end of the day, I did like to actually see the, the um, comics brought to life a bit more. I always did like the little character stuff from the comic books and, and stuff like that. It is and cool. It was actually it like, nice it, to it, look at. I, it's nice to look at. And um, has definitely given me inspiration, a lot of what we're working on at the moment, especially with their, like, um, backdrops and stuff like that and how, like, they interact. But still, at the end of the day, like, there was a few scenes with with the animation where I'm just like, it it didn't fit in, like, certain scenarios. Um, Like, just, like, the way their mouths moved and then, like, nothing else on their body would move. And it was just kind of, like, a bit awkward in some scenes. Like, because the only, like movement you saw on the face where they were trying to express like a certain feeling or something like that wasn't really represented well on their face because they kind of just had plain faces the entire time which if you go and look at some of the comic book panels that's that's how they look like that's literally how they look like yeah um and that's the thing i suppose it's the whole simplistic side to it all and everything like that uh which is still quite nice to see and it was really cool all that side of things but yeah it was just overall i just didn't really like the, the story that they had for it um i was hoping it, they could try to be more comedic with it i didn't really laugh as much in this compared to what i was laughing at in the original movie because yeah. the original movie is absolutely hilarious just the yeah the, the comedic timing all the jokes that they do make in it and like all the wackiness that 
the actors kind of did for that because that's the thing the, the movie is with actual real people in this like weird fight scenes and everything like that and it just like it it's doesn't so fit unique. it's so unique it's yeah. so wacky and i was hoping they could like try to bring that into this show but it, it just didn't work for me um so i am going to give this show a six out of ten okay yeah no that's fair um i really love this show i honestly <laughs> honestly really enjoyed it I had such a good time i'm gonna i'm sitting on an eight out of ten Yep. Because I really liked it. It's nowhere near as good as the movie, but it, it works as like a weird sequel thing to it, which is, I think, what it's trying to be. It's not really trying to overtake the movie in terms of quality or even tell the same story. It's yep. telling a similar story in a different way yeah. and making fun of it and also like referencing that and just saying how good that was. I mean, you get the entire cast from that movie back in here to voice their characters so clearly they're liking it they're enjoying it um yep. so there's definitely that sort of love for the source material in it and of course i i really loved the animation the style's so good to look at and even the slow moments where there's not much happening i really enjoyed the music is great the character performances i thought were really fun and the jokes i thought were really funny most of them hit um for me at least so yeah i'm sitting on an eight out of ten nice nice yeah so that's 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 really about it i'm just looking through pictures of of the show right now that's the thing like oh yeah the, the style and what they did i i will admit like it is very very like well done and definitely like what i'm trying to attempt any closer at the moment to the comics like no it, it no. looks exactly like it yeah i feel like yeah. they did awesome Pretty no, cool. they did they did an amazing job with all that so yeah so that's basically a wrap on this week's episode of we talk film so we do thanks for everyone for coming out you know we do things we're on social medias make sure to stick around if you're on youtube for the director's cut uh only on youtube you know we're here still talking about things i don't know what we're talking about but we'll find out oh, I don't know. Well, after this is all finished so we'll catch you next time everyone bye bye Could you hear the audio then? Nope, the end? Nope. It's so weird. Nice. It's so weird. Like I, my, my timing's so weird. off when I can't hear like anything, and I'm not sure why I can't hear yeah. anything. I wonder why. Um, it's probably just some updates changed, like a certain sound thing, mm. like certain sounds just not in the right spot as to where it should be. And it's very weird. It is weird, very but weird. you know, these things happen. Oh, that happens. Oh man. Director's oh, man. cut. Uh, Director's cut. Did you watch Invincible, good sir? No, I've still got it still on my list. Damn. I because it was the it. season finale oh, as shit. well. Well yeah. of this year anyway. Part one well, season finale. We can do it next week. Are we doing Napoleon next week? We're doing Napoleon next week. So Okay, yeah. we can do Napoleon and Invincible. Napoleon and Invincible? That sounds pretty cool. Well, it's only like that's the four weird. episodes they released of Invincible. Um, oh, yeah. This well, year. Okay. Yeah. Um, Wait, so it's not the finale? No, well, it's, the, it's the finale of part one of season two. Oh. There's going to be a part oh. two uh, next okay. year. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, since okay. like the animation thing, like it took them so long and COVID and um, everything. So, oh, that's yeah. all right. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. So yeah, I'll watch those and we can do that next week. Nice. Stay tuned, YouTube audience. Stay tuned for Napoleon and Invincible. Ooh. Or just... <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for... <laughs> can we do that? Can you do that on the YouTube next week? Yeah, I today will. we're talking I about... Today we're and talking the, about... The pop <laughs> and we can make uh, that like a, a YouTube short clip because that's really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then we do oh, it for Napoleon great. also. Like, oh, because we're talking about man. <laughs> we're talking about man. <laughs> no, we got to do little. Uh, we got to start doing little skits again for like the. Oh uh, yeah. Joke now we'll, we'll definitely like, next um, year. Um, I want to start doing more of that type of stuff again. Like planning a lot more what we're gonna do per episode, like through the week, and then releasing as well on the YouTube side of things, like doing shorts, cutting down the videos a bit more. So it's like, you can just watch when we talked about Napoleon, Same. when we just talked about that, yeah. blah, 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 blah. 
and everything like that. But that, you okay. know, it takes time and, and effort to do all those things. And at the There's moment, I have very limited time. <laughs> we both are very limited. We We're both are limited. We I'm surprised we've been doing this every week. <laughs> like I'm surprised. Really this is week 39, this episode. We haven't missed, 30 we haven't missed a week. weeks. We've had some delayed We've been a episodes. bit late. Yeah, we've been delayed, but we haven't missed a week. Yeah. Delays and, you know, were never our fault anyway. It was always No, no, it was always something Discord like Discord going on. Zencaster. Or God, fucking yeah. Zencaster. I'm glad we don't use that anymore. <laughs> God, no. I still get the emails. I hate it. Oh them. yeah. Um, and that's the <laughs> thing, like I, I'm hoping yeah, next year we can do like literally fifty two episodes in one year. What's fifty two weeks? Jesus uh, Christ. Um, can you yeah. imagine that? That'd be nearly a hundred episodes of We Talk Film by the end of this. Yeah. Year. Yeah. That's, That's going to be insane, and especially with all the stuff we, we're going to be doing next year and everything like that. That's right. Yeah. Your boy and I, we're still continuing to be filmmakers next year. We're going to be back making stuff. We're, we're doing the, the advanced diploma. We're, we're doing stuff. We, yeah. we, we are learning stuff. more, and it's just a whole nother level of oh, um, man. filmmaking so next year. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I I'm not terrified. Wait. It's going to be good. It's, it's going, going to be good, be good. Um, but then obviously yeah. there is a certain something else you and I are both working at the moment. Uh, if that also ends up happening, which we will talk about straight away uh, when we can on the podcast, um, as soon as it's possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. what we can talk about is the two minute films that we worked on at the end of the year are nearly finished. They're going through they? post production. That's good. They're getting there. Will I see him? Or is it going to become another where uh, well, I am? I won't see it to 20. <laughs> no, I won't see it to next year. <laughs> oh, you haven't even seen it yet. Oh, the where I am is looking so good. I'm honestly kind of upset you haven't seen it because it looks so good. Um, I was lucky enough to tag along to those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was good. Um, but yeah, no, the two minute one's coming along. Substitute's getting there. Yep. It's all right. I mean, no, it's not my favorite thing. But I, yeah. I mean, I like it. It's cool. It's unique. It's vibey. Um, yeah. But yeah, they they they're done by Friday. So by the time next episode's out, they'll be in picture locked. We cannot touch them. Done. Nice. So, okay. They better be cool, good. Cool, cool, and cool. Beans. The week after is the screening. Because when? Yeah. It's the screenings. Like what? What's the date? The sixth. I think it's the sixth. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to ask again because I don't know if anything's been planned. I don't even know where it is yet. I haven't organized yeah. anything so. Neither do I. Neither Neither do I was going to like invite some people, but it's like, I don't know where it is or also when it is. So that's kind of like, kind of what you need, you know, yeah, to invite I people. We'll find out <laughs> this week, I suppose. I hope so. I hope so, I hope so too. <laughs> no. No, I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you, you like to talk about anything else on the director's uh, cut today? I don't or know. Is that it? I've struggling for words today. It's yeah, so hot. it's it's a bit like that. It's hot. It's sweaty. You know, Australia. I turn my fan off when we Fuck do it. the thing, so it's like killing me here. Oh, can you hear my fan? I hope not. No, no, but I, I can hear good. mine through my through my microphone. Oh, okay. so I have to turn mine off. Well, that's Dang. where I think we'll cut today's director's cut anyway um Yay. so yeah we'll see you next time on on the we talk films the stuff and things we do yay yay bye see you next time